that is a pretty good weekend, but uh, we teased something last week that we got to get right to. You talked about some kind of story you had, some kind of dirt on the great Tony Schiavone. Some kind of dirt? <laughs> well, well, cough it up, Nate. Let's hear about Tony. I own, I own Schiavone. Have you, not, have you not noticed that between Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone, they talk about me and tell stories about me literally at least once a month, right? So, Tony, I'm going to let you off the hook because I love Lois and I love your family. So I'll just tell you one that will probably just be telling on myself, which I always do. <laughs> so, Mark, when I was the Black Scorpion, uh, you know, the deal with Al Perez quit WCW because he didn't want to be the, the Black Scorpion. So we went to St. Louis. It was either going to be me or Barry, the Black Scorpion, and I felt like Barry and Iron were a much better team, and they were racing. They were wrestling Doom with Nancy, uh, and there was a big, big match for all of them. So I went, I went and bought a $2,000 studded cape. You've seen pictures of it. Put the mask on, and I had to go underneath the ring for five hours. So... You can imagine. <laughs> and the minute I came up, everybody knew who I was anyway, right? So after being frustrated, thinking I had a terrible match, realizing that I'd just gone from being Ric Flair, so I don't know how many times world champion, <laughs> to the Black Scorpion, <laughs> to appease Jim Hurd and the company. Or no, that was Ole's idea. Um, I went back to the Marriott Hotel and I proceeded to be the Black Scorpion. And I was in search of Sting all night long. Then I found a volunteer. And I invited the volunteer to my room at the Marriott. And I called Shivani. Shivani! It's <laughs> the Black Scorpion. Come down to my room now. <laughs> the rest is history. I'll let him tell the rest about his podcast. <laughs> no, but I said, the, the most fun I have with Sean Flanning, when I first met Tony, I would say, he was calling balls and strikes for a, for the, a single A Charlotte O's. And I said to Jimmy Crockett, I said, that kid out there calling balls and strikes should be working for you because these guys, the announcers they had there were, were so old, as I am as old now, you know, not, not talking bad about anybody, but they just needed young, fresher people that were more, you know, I think more people that more, uh, had more appeal for the audience. So that's how Tony got his gig there. So then um, I helped Tony get to New York and then I helped Tony get back. So I've been a big part of Tony's life. Oh, and, and, I, and, I, and, and I have taken Tony under my arm a few places. You know, and just had and just had a great time. That's all I can say. Well, no Lois, better. I love you, Lois. <laughs> What's your favorite bottle of wine after 5 p.m.? Of course, King's Estate Pinot Noir. Now, are you a xenophile? Are you like a fancy schmancy wine guy? I'm, a, I'm an Oregon. It's got to be light. I drink it on ice. One glass of wine, eight ounces of water. One glass of wine, eight ounces of water. 20 glasses of wine, 28 ounce containers of water. Wow. Then, then, then it's a white, I bring home food from the restaurant I'm at, watch Sports Center, check the ratings on our podcast, and say night night. <laughs> and finally, here's one more. I think we have <laughs> one more tweet. No or, face, or FaceTime with Wondrous Wendy. <laughs> Well, well, nobody's better than Tony, and he's certainly having a great uh, uh, run now in AEW. Oh, uh, he's fabulous. Hey. The guy is so damn good. He doesn't get nearly enough credit. Tony Shimani is really good at what he does. Well, and you talked about the mix back in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Bob Cottle was, I believe, the primary announcer back then. Tom Miller. Think, uh, Tom well, Miller. Bob was, in, Bob was in Raleigh. Oh, okay. Okay, but I thought the team of Tony and Bob, I thought uh, Tony gave Bob Excellent. a little bit of a second, second life. A, a second, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, oh, Bob Cottle was fantastic. But I just think, you know, like not like everything in sports now, I, I think that they have to keep pushing 
as, as, I mean, as well as talent, you got to keep pushing younger guys into these announced positions. I mean, I look at Romo, and Romo to this day you know, was a great football player. I don't know if he'll ever be in the Hall of Fame, but he's 10 times the announcer he was a football player. Tony Romo to me right now is the guy. I and agree. He, he, cool. and, and Mark, you see a lot of football. Tony Romo, from the day he walked behind that mic, he, he took on a whole new stance. Well, and, and being a good player is no guarantee you're going to be a good announcer. Either. Exactly. For example, Ray Bork, who's one of the top defensemen of all time in hockey, he became an analyst for ESPN. Mm -hmm. This is years and years ago, and they literally had to let him go after a week. He was that really? bad. Yeah. So uh, so it, it, it fits some better than others, but you're right about Tony Romo, and certainly Tony Schiavone is, uh, to my mind, the three best announcers ever in wrestling history are in no particular order, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone and Lance Russell. And I think whoever's fourth is a relatively distant fourth. I would, I would agree. I would agree. I'd say I'm fourth. What do you think? Uh, uh, um, well, if you'd done it longer, you would be number one. <laughs> That's nice of you to say, but I think... Yeah, we, but we... It, it, see, at some point in time, as, a, as an announcer, you have to be a baby face. And you, you are incapable of being nice. Oh, for a period of time. still am. Still am. That's in my radio. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, though, and... Uh, and uh, people are going to give me a hard time for this, but I watch the guys doing color today. Yeah. And I'd be better than all but a couple of them. No question about that. All these years later with what I've learned about announcing and for that matter about wrestling, I'd be better than all uh, but a couple of them. And, and one thing I would know too is that you don't have four and five people on mic. That's one thing yeah. about AEW that frustrates me a great deal. Their announce team is often four or five guys. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. all that happens then is you try to get your shit in. I'm sorry, no matter who you are, you're human. You're going to try to get your voice heard above the others instead of painting a picture. And when you have that many guys on mic too, Nate, you can never use silence as a dramatic device because there's never any silence. Exactly. I, I couldn't agree more.